month of an evening with the beings. Not everyone's going to know each other, but I'm sure by the end of the night, energy-wise, you will. It's not always about communication. You can connect with each other through energy as well. So how we do these sessions is we'll have an introduction. So the introduction, I know there's some new people here, so briefly we'll just say how the beings have connected with us individually. And then um, we'll speak about anything that comes up to up to the, the, the surface with regards to the beings. That could be anything that comes, any information you need to know about the beings more. Our journey with the beings since 2017 to now. We'll just do an introduction on that. So it's like a little bit more. You know about the beings now. So the next session is like, okay, why are they still here? What are they doing? You know, what do they do to our lives as individuals? Because they're not here for no reason. So it's just giving you guys a bit more information on them. And then probably about just after 7.30, I'll go into the vortex and they use me as a channel and then they will start speaking. And then after that, they will say questions and you can ask them questions. I would really say, you know, don't be ashamed or a bit like shy to ask any questions, even if it's something so simple, nothing simple. You know, even the simple questions are part of life. It's part of how we're living day to day. So there's no simple question whatsoever. Um, they do tend to speak quite um, not so logical. So some of the times you might have to put the pieces together. When they say I, they mean the we. When they say we, they mean, you know, they can mean something else. And um, for the time of me being in the vortex, I'm, I'm not here. So it really is like, um, I call it the death moment because I'm in the nothingness whatsoever. Um, and then I'll come back and then we'll finish off with any questions you've got, what you thought of the night and, and stuff like that. Um, you might want to know why it's becoming like once a month and it's becoming once a month because the messages that they have for us humans <laughs> they have to repeat themselves because us humans we're stuck in this robotic um illusion of you know we need to be told now you know we're just following really following whoever it may be and we're not going within so the beings are making this really like the school of Chon where each month is becoming like not teachings but messages for you guys to be able to take away and think you know what do you want to do with this do you want to make changes do you don't want to make changes yeah so that's why they're here um they're here for as long as they say so you know whenever they go they go you know they haven't gone yet i don't know how long they're gonna stay or not stay but i definitely make the most of it definitely without a doubt i anything that i pick up on my my calling is for what they say i just do and i feel and see the benefit of it since 2017 to now you know my life has just shifted in the knowingness of peace happiness and love just just how it is i've got nothing more to say it's nothing to do with materialistic stuff or I have this or I have that. It's just the oneness of peace, happiness and love. And within that, my contract unfolds. So it's like each time I, a door opens each time. So I'm, I'm feeling the growth each time. And it's daily that I'm feeling the growth and that door's opening. Yeah. So um, that's what, why they're here. Um, just quickly, I'll just share, this is them, I thought I'd bring, what, well, um, I'll, so I'll, I'll, this is the original um, picture that I, uh, that I drew the first time I saw them. I um, saw them in my living room, they always come in threes in my illusion, in my consciousness, and um, they said to draw us straight away, then you won't be fearful, and that happened. And um, the relationship, and communication started from there and then that same weekend i think it was 
the weekend or the Monday and net um, connected. And do you want to just say quickly, <coughs> just for people that knew? Yeah, them. so that was a, um, that was on the Saturday, so on the Monday, and the, the picture was put up and I connected and I went round and they spoke to me directly. And actually, I was just thinking about just now, thinking about the first words actually they actually said to me was, Haven't you had enough yet? That was actually the first thing they said. And I remember at the time I had no idea what they were speaking about. If I'd be truthful, I thought they were talking about my dating habits. That's how, <laughs> that's, how uh, that's the level of spirituality I was on. Right? Because, but the patience and the way they, they carried on speaking and they, they, in that first hour, they explained, we actually asked who they was. There was a lot that got asked about. Um, and then after that, the same as Sage, I then grew my own relationship with them. They, they actually, for the first three months, I was really fortunate that I had, there was just us, really. It was being Sage and me, and we had that every day for three months straight, and night, actually, sometimes. It was relentless, and it was messages, and it was questions. I can't think of any questions. Well, there's probably questions now I haven't asked, but at the time, I can't think of anything I didn't ask. There was literally everything, things that I'd been interested in, things that my family may have been interested in. I was thinking, you know, while they're here, I can ask them everything. And that relationship really grew. And then they, the way that Sage sees them, I know I don't see them. So obviously the question was, why does she see them and I don't see them yet? So that, that was one of the first questions we asked quite early on. And they said, not everybody, not everybody's energy is ready to see them. And not only that, they maybe not everybody in NG can take them, which I know that I couldn't. So I was quite happy with the situation, although I did have some friends and family members that said to me, well, you really need to see them. How do you know, how do you know what they're saying is true? And I can't describe to you that, but all I can say is in the first three months, they gave us complete, they would say something to Sage and they would say something to me, and we, she lived here and I lived in Bromley, and we wouldn't have communicated with each other, yet we would have had the same stuff said to us, and we would have wrote it down or drew a picture, and that went on for weeks, months, months and months, until it became concreted that I don't need to see them for them to speak to you. And that, I feel, was because not everybody is going to speak to them, but everybody is going to not see them, I mean, that everybody will speak to them in mind, but not necessarily see them. And it's learning to... The other thing I thought I'd quickly say is that all the thoughts that you have in your mind, even right now, are connected to the beings. So, and that was one thing that, so I haven't changed as a person, I mean, there's lots of aspects of my life that I have changed about, but as for me, as a person, the voice when it comes through is still my thought, it's still my voice, yet sometimes the, the information hasn't come from me because I know I don't know it, or sometimes if I say things, I know I don't know that, and it's obviously channeling down, and it's coming out, and it's like I'll say something, and think, oh, well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. And then, you know, so that's how it starts to work, and that's how I feel that everybody, once they connect, once you start to realise that inner voice, that's how it will start, because it's, that's how it works. We've just forgotten. That's all it is. Yeah, definitely. And, um... What's so um, beautiful about the connection with the beings is that um, throughout the journey of the years now, I think it's only been this year, there's been um, people that's seen the pictures and said, oh, I've connected with the beings. I used to see them when I was younger, or I used to see them when I, you know, and that was nice for me because, mm. you know, I'm the only one seeing them. I know I'm not the only one that sees them like that. You know, they come in different forms and they're different energies, they're the energy of the oneness. So I see them like that because that was my contract, that was what we chose before, you know, came into this earthly realm. Everyone sees them differently, you know, people see them the same depending on the contract. And um, it's really just about understanding about going within. And we all have different energies and different personalities or voices inside of us. You know, I know the humans will call it like mental health and stuff, but we all have it within within our mindset. It's about balancing that out and knowing that 
what you what you what is what is being said to you, how you connect with that, because that's what it is. What it's saying to you, how you connect with that. So, um, one of the things that the beings connected with me with was was in two thousand and seventeen we had the, like the three months, four months. We done a, a, a gathering like this. We called it gathering together. But I was really connecting with the both sides of who I am. So I was connected with my higher self and I was connecting with the ego. And it was the ego that was quite, um, oh, but well, what if people, I say this and people think this? Oh, uh, what if they have been seen and they don't believe? And one of the fears that the beings worked with me with, which I had many fears, they worked with, with me. One of them was being able to um, have the oneness of when you're sharing this because I knew this was my contract so it was going to come when I'm sharing this channeling and this message to outside of myself love the people that think you're crazy you're mad that no way is that happening I'm not believing you you need the white coats to come and get you love that energy and love the energy that say oh I get you I'm drawn to that I understand it I believe it and being able to love the two. And they worked with me with that to be able to get to where I am now where I really don't feel no separation whatsoever. Someone can, the whole of the world can say, you're talking rubbish. I don't need anyone to believe me. You know, I don't need anyone to say, okay, well, well Sage, I want you to be able to prove to me that they are channeling you or they are speaking to you. I'm not here for that. You know what I mean? That doesn't, that's not a game I want to play. I'm not here for that sort of game. What I'm here for is my contract to share their message and you guys to have your own perception and your own calling if you connect or not. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with me. That's none of my business, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, it's none of my business if you guys connect or don't connect. All I know is I'm doing my purpose and that's sharing. That's all I'm here to do, you know, nothing more. And um, that was fantastic for them to do that. So I had, a, I can't even count how many fears they had to work with me, all different ones. And one of the things that they done lo lo loaded me with is the light code. So I've got them here and I just wanted to share with you the light codes. So these are the light codes that they shared. And they sh this happened within months. So I, I have working with them for months with these light cards and their symbols and their sounds. And they worked with me for months and months and months to download them into my spirit and into my mind and into my energy. And it wasn't um, where I had to do one at a time. I just let it flow and I just would learn them and it would just go into my spirit and they will tell me what it's for, and then they will give me um, an example of how it works, and they would, you know, put it inside of me, and I will go on to the next and go on to the next. And what it does, it opens up your contract. So before the beings, I felt like I was doing my contract. So I was doing a lot of energy working before. I was always quite spiritual, but I still didn't know what I was doing to be honest. So I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. But if someone said, what is your, literally your contract? I couldn't tell them. I would say, I'm not sure, but I, I know I'm doing this right now, it feels good. But I would not have actually known that word. You know, your soul contract or your contract or your purpose. I would not have known. And going through the, the light codes, it made me, it's, it's not a feeling, just a feeling it shows you, it starts to show you the doors opening and it allows you, because we have free will, remember? So nothing's straight cut, even though everything that we, every step that we take, we're meant to take it, yeah? Even if we think we haven't took one, we weren't meant to take that one. The one we take afterwards, we're meant to take that one. You know, if we're standing still for a while, we're meant to do that. So everything's meant to be, but knowing your contract for me, was something that I knew that would relax my life because I was quite a searcher. So I was searching, 
what is this? What does this mean? I know I'm not meant to be here for no reason. So where is it? What is it? Does it you know, and I was quite a searcher. So that takes a lot of energy on its own, just thinking that. What am I doing? Where do I go? What you know, so to be able to identify and my contract is um to share my gifts to others for them to be able to go within and and get theirs out. That's what I'm here to do. And that comes in many forms through energy work, through drawing, through talking, through communication, <coughs> through just being still, just through energy. And I love that because it's versatile. So it allows me to be versatile. That is my contract. And since I've been doing that, it's just changed my life of how I see things, how I see people. Just everything, the way I dress, how I, how I, everything, <laughs> just, Everything, my concept of how I see life, the way I speak about life, people that surround me, I'm not around a lot of humans no more. And I know why, because picking up on energies and other people's thoughts that I can connect to and I can feel and I can hear all the time, I just don't choose to do that no longer because I just want to do my purpose. And when I've done my purpose, I'll be transitioning on. So I'm happy for that. So that's me, and that's how the beings work. Not for everyone, because everyone has their own contract and their own, you know, um, connection with the oneness, the energy of all things. You know, you can call the beings God if you want. It's, those are just words and, and, and symbols, but when you connect to the energy, that's when you can say, okay, I don't really need words for this, because it's a knowing. There's a difference of doing something and you're talking it, and then it becomes an action, and then it becomes a knowing. When it's a knowing, you don't need no one to tell you you're right. You don't need no one to tell you you're wrong. You don't, you don't need no one to even see what you're doing to say, well done, well done. You don't need none of that. You're just being. And it's your aura that surrounds you that speaks to people if they're aware of that. And that's how you become. Your aura just shines, and you're just walking with this all of that is shining and that's for everyone to be able to have that aspect yeah so um, i wanted to share that bit of the beings because that bit a couple of people's even been activated already that's here you know and they would know their journey and they would even know i'm not speaking for you guys but you would know that when the beings gave you your contract it was like there you go there's the gift now you go and work it out <laughs> You know, you go and work out what this gift is now. This is your purpose, this is your contract. There you go, unwrap it, and then you go. And Because they're not here to tell you. No one's here on this earth that should be telling you you need to do this like the Ten Commandments. That's not how life's meant to be. You're, we're meant to be here to learn, to experience, yeah, and be able to have free will. And what's the point of feeling that we know we have free will, but then living in a earthly world where we don't have it because we're being told what to do all the time so it's like conflicting and that conflict conflicts your energy as well so we've lived like this for so many years we don't know how to go within we just don't know how to do it and even if we pop in it's for a short time because it's like this is a bit uncomfortable and let me just go out and ask let me just go for a book to see get confirmation and now we have google so let me just go for google just for confirmation, you know, so we go out a lot and not having trusting in self to say, no, that's a knowing, I know already. And then allow that trusting to show and be like, oh, that's confirmation, instead of going to find the confirmation, yeah? So um, do you want to say anything before we start? I just wanted to say that with regards to when we're talking about contract, do you understand even what that means? Does everybody understand what we're talking about when we're saying it's a contract? Think right, so what the being says, if we go back, is that it's all oneness, yeah? This is an illusion, this is an earthly world illusion, and the, as, a, as a being, as an essence of anything, you want to experience. So they basically said that everything you experience, which you can't never be in the wrong place really, because you're always in the right place, um, you have chosen to experience, and that is, everything that's the good the bad and the ugly because they said the whole point of this earthly realm 
is to experience emotion. Mm -hmm. Because you have to be emotion, because it's the emotion that helps the energy grow, and you can only get that from experiencing things. Mm -hmm. So that's a contract, when we're referring to say our contract, that is what a contract is. And that we only had that because they gave it to us and said, this is a contract, you do this, you do this, and you do this, and you do that, and you do that, and you do that, and you don't do that, and you don't do that, but that's okay. Do you mean like something you agreed to before you were born? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Your contract is you. Mm. Yes. And you're looking at yourself. Yeah. You unve unveiling your, your story, but it's you unveiling your story. It's mm. you that chose all those people yeah. you want in your life, all those people that didn't do good to you as well. Mm. You had an agreement to say, I'm going to be the one to not do this mm. to you or to do this to you, mm. to get you to wake up. I'm going to be the one to abuse that. I'll be the one to do it. And you'll be like, okay. And it's, an, it's a contract between all the people in your life, all of them. Even that, I always say the, the, the man that you go and get your newspaper and yeah. you say hello every day yeah. and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to the same man every day. And then that one time you could transition on and you'd be like, wow, I remember that, that man in the shop where I just used to get my paper. That was a contract with that time. What did you learn? Mm. What did you get and from you, it? If you can keep that in your mindset, that when you go out and if something happens where it's like it caught you unawares or you might walk in an argument or you know the vibe's not quite what you think you want the vibe to be, then you can take a step back from that and think, okay, what did I want to learn from this? Because this person's in my life screaming at me, but actually we've agreed to do this, so there's something that I need to get from this, yeah. opposed to reacting as you would normally react. That I found was a big learning curve for me. Because at every situation, even though now I still haven't got stage calmness, I'm, I'm a water sign, so I'm all very, and I feel energy and I feel like that, so I can sort of feel like I'm going a bit like that. But the only difference is, I pull myself back a little bit constantly now, thinking, okay, so this is a reflection of me, really. So what am I trying to tell myself in, within this situation? And that, as you keep doing it, it becomes more and more, and, until the point is you're at that point all the time. So that's what I was saying. Yeah. Oh, no, good, okay. good. Thank you. Yeah. They're, they're getting ready to come up and feel them, so I'm just going to speak some more until they're here. I'd like them to be here fully and then we can start. So I've got my, this is my uh, rainwater here. So this was one of the things that the beans said that um, we should start to use is working with elements, to be able to work with elements more, to shift our energy to another level because we're used to being told so we're sort of like that robots at the moment so to come out of that energy field we need to work with elements and one of them was the um the drops and i've been using it since the 2017 um i developed early stages of cataracts in my eyes because i was going through the menopause at the time and um, they said to use it and they said to use um, seaweed as well, but Which I didn't. Know. Yeah, but um, I chose the the rainwater for for my eyes, and um, yeah, I've been using it ever since it worked. I used it put in my eyes as drops, but you don't have to. You can put spray like what you do and just spray outside of your eyes. You can just wipe it like like a cleanser if you want. You can go with your spirit, go with your energy. Mm -hmm. My one was to use it in my eye. So I used it as drops for about six months, went back to the opticians and it was all gone. One of the signs with the, the um, cataracts was like in the night time, I found it really challenging to drive. I just couldn't see properly in the night. And I was like, what is going on here? And I didn't realize until I realized it was the cataracts coming. So um, yeah, so this has been really, <laughs> really good. And I'll wait for the rain to come. I think I'm the only one when it's pouring. Yes, when it's rain coming, and it's all over. Yeah, the yeah where everyone's <laughs> saying, oh my God, you want the sun, it's raining too much. I'm like, nope, any rain water I can get. And I, and I like it to come straight. Yeah. So I really wait. And, you know, and I don't leave it out for days or anything mm. for dust to get in. I really re let it come down and then I'll bring it in and I'll do my own blessing and my own cleansing from it. And then I'm, and I've been using it ever ever since 2017 and I still use it now. And um, so that's another example of when the being says something and putting it into action. So only you would know if it's gonna work or not. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm gonna be getting ready to go in now. Um, I don't know how long I'm gonna be going in for, but I know already there's energies out there, um, not bad energies or anything like that, but I can feel energies coming in. I'm gonna have to close the door just until I do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So I can feel it. And then we can open it back. Again, I don't know what they're going to speak about. I don't know what they're going to say. They tend to say different things. Just go with the flow. And if you have got any questions, just don't be afraid to ask them. tonight to share a message for you humans to ponder on, to see if it connects with your mind, your body and your spirit. We are here as the oneness. We are here to love the physical side of you. Before we start, with the feel of your energy, with love, relaxation, and peace. We will come round to all of you and connect our energy to you, because we are one. Let's fill up this space with the pureness of love that we all deserve. want to start with faith. A 
as most of the time with humans, it's fear that allows them to not find who they are. It's the fear that allows humans to not find who they are. What do we mean by this? Finding your way back home. When humans are born, some are naturally born with the energy of fear. Not all humans are born pure. Why? Because they connect with the energies of all things. So some babies they never birth, coming into birth. Have the energy of their parents, grandparents, great grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends. So they can come into this world and already experience pain. When a baby comes into this world and cries, that's the first sound that other humans will hear. That cry is the beginning of their journey. Now humans, if you're able to tap in to your inner self more, you'll be able to identify what that cry means to support that baby from birth. There's different cries for different babies which will determine if they're coming out of fear, coming out of pureness, coming out of different form of energies. It's the cry that identifies the starting of their illusion on this earthly realm. Some humans think they just cry to say, oh yes, they're alive, they're okay, they're crying now, they may be hungry. But we are telling you that it's that cry, the energy, the sound, of that cry that determines if they're coming out into this earthly realm, into a fearful energy, pure energy, loving energy, brightened energy, happy energy, calm energy. That cry says so much. We're saying this to you you to start to be aware we have to shift energy this earthly realm is changing it's always been changing but changing at a speed humans are going to become more fearful more frightened more detached to their inner self and it's the inner self that has all the answers. So let's go back to fear. If you have any fears inside your mind and your body, it tells you. Don't run away from your fears. Shift the energy from your fears by looking at it to deal with it. Now when we say deal with it, we're not talking about even making it an action. We're just saying to love it. If you love anything to do with your fears, 
it will shift energy. As simple as that. Anything you fear, love it. And it will start to shift energy. We can't go any further with you humans and tell you other things if you don't start to work with the fear. It helps to open up the doors for you to go to the next step. We always say humans are visitors. You are not meant to be here in the physical but eternal. Energy wise, yes. Spirit wise, yes. Physical, no. Because you shift energy. So when all humans transition on, they go into a spirit form and it's the spirit form that chooses to experience whatever they need to experience next. Some stay on the earthly realm and experience be the spirit on the earthly realm. Some shift and change form straight into a soul. The difference between a spirit and a soul is that a soul is the pure oneness of all things. The pure oneness of all things. Spirit still has set a form of separation where they can experience different things. A soul doesn't. We want to speak about the energy chi. Humans call it sex, intimacy, intercourse. Again, you humans have connected with the, the, the energy chi in a way that it's started to abuse the body and the mind. Yes, energy chi creates life. It also connects other forms of energy life. Every time you connect to that experience. We'll give you an example. When you're experiencing the energy chi, humans call it intimacy or sex. It's the most powerful energy that could develop inside and outside with regards to experiences. It's highly, highly, highly effective to your own physical body and to the other's physical body. You're not just working with the energy of fluids, and the organs inside. You're working with the other forms of energy. We're trying to break it down to you for you to maybe understand it differently. So while we speak, go into your bodies and just visualize your organs inside. It's of the elements of water, heat, fire, air, wind. It has
has all the elements in it. So when you experience the energy chi, what do you think happens to your mind, your body, and your spirit? Yes, it's a game, because life is a game. But it can affect insides and the person's insides at the same time. As humans now, it's not just about giving life. It's about giving connections and energies to one another. We'll give you another example. If a person comes into your home, who you're connected with, and you're doing an energy chi with, and they have trauma in them, they have past traumas in them, they're upset all the time, they can get depressed and down, they can be fearful, that energy is going on to you every time you experience the energy chi. It's a beautiful connection. We created it. But it's one to know what you're doing. Humans, remember. We want to make a little joke. Talk about the females. We call it breasts. When they have a baby or they give birth, milk comes out of those breasts. That's what they're there for. But humans chose to play around with the breasts. And it became an act which humans would say a sexual act for hundreds and hundreds of years afterwards. It was there for a reason. For female to be able to not just give birth babies their food, but it was milk for everyone. It's liquid for everyone, not just babies, also other humans. And it was disregarded and transformed into a sexual act. Again, we will say there's nothing wrong with that. We're just giving you information to see things differently. There's no right or there's no wrong here. Please hear us when we say that. There is no right or there's no wrong. Energy chi is an energy not just to heal one another, or support one another's energy. And it's not just to have fun. You're entwining each other's energy. It's powerful. It's beautiful. It's of love. Not to take advantage of. Oh, just because, oh, I just want to release. much more powerful than humans start to use it in the power that it is energy form you will see magic start to begin within your life just by shifting your mindset and not just seeing it as oh sex oh, I just want to release oh sex I think it's fun Humans did not create energy chi. The 
acquire the instinct. It was created for humans to connect to their power. It's part of their superpower. It has messages in there. When you connect, it has messages. And we're not just talking about two people. You can't say that because we're the ones. Whoever you're connecting with for that time is sharing energy. And it can share energy in a way where energy can go onto you and you can feel, why do I feel like this? Why am I feeling like my life is not going nowhere? Because maybe you're connecting with an energy with regards to the, the energy chi in a way where it's going into your organs and it's staying there because you're not cleansing it out. It's becoming you. Their mindset, their thoughts become you. Just something to think about humans. Again, there's no right or there's no wrong. Let's start to switch the way we see energy, energy chi. Humans call it sex or intimacy. I know what other words. Start to shift that and you'll see your life start to change. And we are not talking about just doing it with somebody else. Again, energy is within you. So connecting within your own self also. You can cleanse your body and your mind and your soul through that also. We want to continue with talking about the other, another form of fear, which is happening at the moment. We just want to clarify and give you the love and intentions of what's going to happen <coughs> at some point. The virus. Humans, some humans are terrified. Terrified and fearful with regards to the virus. I've said this before, but we have to repeat ourselves. Everyone has viruses inside of them. If you build your immune system, the virus will come in and go back out again. Other humans, for some reason, do not want you to know this information. They don't want you to know that you can use herbal stuff, you can use the elements. shift anything inside your body. So we are here to tell you to build your immune system through using elements, using herbs, fresh herbs. Humans like to use herbs in different ways and the different ways you use it will determine what it does to your insides. Be wise of how you're using it. Connect with your inner self and it will show you if it's working for you. We don't want humans to be using stuff inside their bodies that just relaxes them because they need energy. The energy needs to be alive to shift for them to be able to grow and learn in this school of life. Be wise with what herbs you are using. Not every herb is for your body. 
and not every herb, you're meant to use it in certain ways. Your inner self will tell you how to use certain herbs and it might not be like everyone else. Be unique to who you are. Learn to understand your home before you go out in other people's home. Go within to find who you are. Go within to find who you are. Questions? to be in a dimension higher a higher dimension all right rather than the the three dimension that we exist in humans like to put numbers to things there's nothing wrong with that in the pureness of energies there's no three dimension five dimension seven dimension a hundred dimensions there's just the oneness of dimensions. And within that, di that dimensions, there's different forms of experiences. That's the difference. The more that you're awake with your inner self, the more you experience the next level of dimension. And the more that you grow again, the more it will show you the next experience, and then the next, and then the next. So your question is, how does it feel? How do you feel when you grow and you get to the next stage of your experience? That's when you go into another dimension. Even if it feels like every moment and every day you are doing the same old thing, going round and round in cycles, you're not. Your conscious mind might be, be being that, but on a whole, you are shifting all the time. You are growing all the time. Allow your ego to be free, to feel the essence of who you are. I know my contract some humans um, are intent on having power, more and more power, and namely the Chinese government. What do the beings feel about that? Everyone has their own contract to bear. And we know this, we've spoken about this. We've spoken about different people, their contracts what they've chosen here on this earthly realm and the effects that it's going to have on others because it's a spider web. Every single aspect of this world, humans, insects, animals, the earthly world is all connected like a spider web. So it would cause an effect, but it was chosen that way. You're also going to get some humans in their dimension, in their illusion, that don't experience what others are going to choose to do for their contract, because that wasn't their contract in this earthly realm. So you might have someone and their contract is to cause an effect to other hierarchies, that choose to do and experience certain things to do with the country. And that was their contract to do something about that, to balance out the energy. And you'll get some that's not there for that. 
Everyone has their contract. Everyone that's here in this illusion, in this earthly realm, has chosen this contract. There's no right or wrong. If you choose, or humans choose, to not be from that frequency, or don't want to experience that frequency, then you don't. But allow everyone to be free to experience their contract. We've told you already, the world will not end because of humans. But it's everyone's experiences, it's their contract that they've chosen while they are here. Do you know that every country, every island, every city in this earthly realm has the yin and yang. Not just Chinese, not just England, not just America, every culture, every country has the yin and yang. Because this is this makeup of this earthly realm. Other dimensions have different energies. They're not all like this. They're not all with the yin and yang, but this one, this earthly realm has the yin and the yang. That is the score of this earthly realm. Humans and all the other insects and all the other creatures are here to experience. And then you transition, transition on and you go to other energy fields. And energy fields. And humans call that dimensions. So the answer to that question is, allow the energies of humans to do their contract and you do yours. And you'll see how it maps out. If you're meant to be part of that frequency or if you're not. And you will see your contract grow further. Uh, how do we as humans reconcile the idea of existence of beings and the mainstream of religion? It's very really simple. Religion is a word. It was a word that humans created because they didn't understand how to connect with the energy of all things. Without those words, religion and all other words, we just have the pureness of oneness. And when you go within, it will guide you to what you need to know. There's no separation from religion, beings, angels, spirits, guardian angels, earthly people, no different whatsoever. We all have the energy field within us that makes us the oneness. We know that some humans will find it challenging if they're in a religion because it's very boxed within knowing a certain thing. And there's no right and wrong, remember. That's their contract. We know if your contract is for you and it's showing you because you feel that peace within. There's humans that's in religions and they feel peace. They feel peace. They don't want to come out that box. That's their contract. And that's right for them. But if for any reason a human doesn't feel that inner peace when they're doing anything or experiencing anything, there's a reason. Go within 
and it will guide you to what that reason means. So the answer to your question is, we are all one, we will always be all one, we are all one energy, and that will always be, even though the ego or the conscious mind separates, but that's where the teachings come in, for you to be able to bring back the oneness within that separation. Um, my question has to do with the uh, chi energy. Um, how do we connect practically with the chi energy and then use that to access um, our superpower? A good question. All humans have energy in their body. It's already there within their body. To have access to the energy chi, you don't need to even touch another person's body. Because you have it within inside you already. So with breathing, with meditation, with going within, it will feel your body. It will feel your body to show you where your energy chi is at different times. Your energy chi moves about, but it has a certain energy feel that is different to other things in your body. So when you go within, you will feel it. And when you start feeling it within, and you release it, follow it to where it's going and it will start to speak to you and when it speaks to you it will guide you to the power within the energy, energy chi is not just for giving birth that's one aspect of it it's also for humans and all other creatures to connect to their power. How do you think the energy chi can birth a baby from the egg and the sperm? It talks to each other. It communicates. It already knows its contract. It already knows if that fetus is going to just be in the, in the belly and then transition on from the belly because that's what it wants to experience. It already knows that. So humans, look into your inner self and once you know that this is a knowing, you will start to be able to open up yourself more by going within. question is um, with regards to the chi energy. Um, so say for example, I've had contact with somebody, a partner, um, and um, their energy might not be of the highest uh, frequency or something of that sort. And because we've had that intimate contact and the transference of energy, um, what are some practical steps um, that I could use or anybody else in here could find that useful to clear that energy? Thank you for sharing that question. Because some humans are still quite shy to talk about the energy chi or sex or intimacy in a way that you have just broken down. We will never tell you everything because we want you to go within. But we can give an example. If 
if you're open within your own spirit and your mind is open when you're connecting with somebody else with regards to the energy sheet, you will feel you will feel their energy. You will get to a state where you'll be able to even know if they have any infections in them or if they you know, their thoughts needs to be cleansed or their, their past needs to be cleansed. You will feel it because it will go into you. So an example of what you can do by cleansing not just yourself, you can ask the person. Be open and say, can we cleanse together? You can cleanse before an experience and then you can cleanse together after that experience. Be open. Let them know that you see sex differently, that you know that energy connects and let's be honest, all humans are going to have past traumas and past experiences and present ones as well. Or little infections inside of them, colds, flus. And you just cleanse it from before. And you can cleanse by something as simple as talking about it and cleansing your mind. You can cleanse it with your mind. Use the air of your mind to cleanse the mind just by speaking and saying, I will be cleansing this experience, this interaction. You can say it in your mind. And if you want to be loving and open and you can speak to the other person, you can say it out loud together with love and cleanse each other before you connect and have a beautiful experience. And then after the experience, you can cleanse again. Try and make this a routine in your life from here on. And you will see your sex experience change. You will go up a level. The energy will shift forward and you will go up a level. You will get to a stage, like sage, where you don't even need to touch the person and you can allow them to release. That's how powerful the energy will become. All humans have it in them. All humans have it in them. And it's a different feeling all together. We are going to go now. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening. And if something resonates with you from within, speak to your inner self and start taking action. We want humans to be able to shift energy in this earthen realm and not being able to live without fear. Live without fear. We want humans to be able to get to a stage where they can embrace death, love death, and really make it be a celebration when a human transitions on. Because they're going on to beautiful things. And their spirit will always be within you. It doesn't go nowhere. You're just communicating with them in a different form. They do not go nowhere. You're sad and weak and crying for their physical, but they have more powers as a spirit. Connect with them. And you will see. Okay. I hope you got something from that. <laughs> I love that.
I'm back. Yeah, I feel, I feel good. I really do feel good. Um, I never remember everything that they say. That's why I like to record it. But um, I'm gonna open the door. Do what I've said. I've said. Yes, I'm water. Yes, I'm water. Yes, I'm water. Yes, I'm water. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, yeah. What what? Did anyone get something from it? Um, did you understand what they were saying? Were they a bit confusing? I thought about sex and cheese. Yeah, yeah, that was quite an over that I've been spoken about before. Yeah. Actually, I remember them speaking about that quite a long time ago, but I haven't spoken about that in a few weeks. What time is it, please? 20 gold stakes. Okay, so they don't have an hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, any feedback? I found it really interesting hearing them talk about cries at birth. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And different cries, and that the, 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 not every.